Some unfortunate news today, Patrick Loyola, a Congolese immigrant, was shot in the back of the head by a police officer. Now, uh, you can see in the video footage, the police officer stopped his car. He got out of the car. I guess he wasn't told to get out of the car. And the officer had claimed that the license plate was did not match the vehicle. Um, started asking him questions. It looks as though there was a language barrier because he didn't seem to understand him. I'm stopping you. Do you have a license? What done? Do you have a driver's license? Do you speak English? Yes. Can I see your license? <laughs> he asked for his ID, his driver's license, and Patrick, you know, started talking to somebody in the passenger seat and then proceeds to run. Um, that is where the officer chases after him and they have a little bit of a scuffle. He brings out his taser gun. Patrick blocks the taser gun, tries to, it seems as though tries to pull it out of his hands or tries to push it away. This is when uh, the police officer seems to have tackled him to the ground and then uh, shoots him at the, in the back of the head. <sighs> very, very unfortunate, very disgusting. And the fact that this, this is still happening shows that there has not been any sort of there hasn't been any progress in the past two years in the police force in America. Um, and that's where the problem is. Like these officers need to be, you know, the training process for these officers, the, the brutalization of, of citizens, all of these things is very problematic. It should not be acceptable. And I just think about the U.S. as a country and how, I mean, recently the U.S. is accusing, accusing um, India of some human rights violations. The U.S. accused Saudi Arabia of of all sorts of things. Uh, but when you look at the way the U.S. treats black people, well, you too are culpable of human rights violations. You consistently kill black people in this country, but then you turn around and you point your finger at other countries. Look in your own backyard, look at your own country, and stop killing unarmed black men. That's just, it's disgusting. It's actually appalling. Really upsetting stuff. And I think, you know, unfortunately for this young man, he seems to have been, he's an immigrant. I don't think he even understands the culture around policing in this country. I think, you know, even just like, I'm a Nigerian American. And I think about in Nigeria, would people fight with the police while well, the police actually does shoot people and kill people in Nigeria? But to some degrees, like you could, I think some people might have a scuffle with that, like that with a police officer and not expect the police officer to shoot them and kill them. Um, he might have thought that he had some sort of like leverage or human rights or some rights to fight for his life, which he does. But unfortunately, this country only upholds those rights for white people. Um, really disgusting, the senseless killing of this young man. I... Now there there have been protests in Michigan. Um, there have been protests. People are protesting, which is right. Which is right. Um, we should protest. We should ask for change. We should fight for change. And to see that my, my son has been killed like an animal by this police officer. Naomba Sharia. I'm asking for justice. Naomba Sharia. I'm asking for justice. Naomba Sharia. I'm asking for justice. Naomba Sharia, dear Patrick. I'm asking for justice for Patrick. You know, his family, his father says he would. You know, the police killed him like an animal. No regard for his life. Think about the father, the mother, the his family that have lost this young man, only 26 years old, lost their son due to senseless drive, just, just uh, senseless violence from a police officer, just from a traffic stop, just from a trap. So you could be crossing the street, minding your business, and they will find an excuse to kill you. And I think this is also a message for Africans. A lot of Africans, and you know, I'm Nigerian American. A lot of Nigerian Americans feel this level of or we are separate, you know, for, we don't have to deal with the plight uh, that black Americans deal with. But at the end of the day, when you come to this country, you're still a black person. And that's actually what I go back about. I made a few documentaries about uh, the history of slavery, the history of uh, white supremacy, and the fact that, you know, on the continent, we sold our brothers and sisters into slavery. We are the reason, and I won't, I won't say it's us, but it's definitely the West African elite but specifically the West African political class, sold our brothers and sisters into slavery, therefore devalued black lives. Not just West Africa, also in East Africa as well, there was a slave trade as well. 
Um, so sold our brothers and sisters into slavery perpetu and created the devaluation of black lives globally, right? And so when I talk about us uniting, you know, this, these divisions that we see online with uh, descendants of slaves, uh, black Americans or foundational black Americans and Africans, African Americans, which is like Africans that are also Americans, like myself, Nigerian American, African American, when you see the division, the tribalism where people are fighting, it's like, guys, we have to unite. We really have to unite because when it comes down to it, when it comes to these situations, these predators, you know, white culture will treat us the same, will brutalize us the same, will kill us the same. They don't see the difference. And to that, that is problematic. Um, and so we have to do something. We have to, we have to do something. That's really the trick. That's really the thing. We have to do something. We have to fight for all black people globally. We can't fight ourselves. We really can't afford to, because that's what white supremacy wants. Um, anyway, such unfortunate stuff. Really sad. Anyway, let me know your thoughts. Leave a comment down below. Don't forget to like, follow, subscribe, all the above. My name is Kenem, and see you next time.